Alrighty, so we are done with our fronts. So you're gonna grab your backs as well and we are going to put them together now. So here are both of my fronts and along this funky curved edge here, you need to lay your pieces right sides together, matching up this edge here. Pin or clip into place. And then we're gonna stitch with a half inch seam allowance. So just right down here. Okay, so now we just need to finish this with our serger. All right, so we have our seams finished and pressed. I'm gonna lay this side so my little zipper placket, or not placket, but my zip, my fly is on my left side of my table. And then I'm gonna lay these two pieces right sides together and I'm gonna match up my seams and then all around and clip. All right, and then what we need to do is we have this top notch up here from when we cut the pattern. We need to draw a line from that notch to this dot here, and that is gonna be our stitch line that we're gonna follow for the fly. So I'm just gonna take a ruler and my marking pen and align the notch and the dot and make a line. And then now when I'm stitching, I'm gonna start my stitch line up here and then come all the way down and then I'm gonna to continue to sew around this curve at that, half, that same half inch seam allowance. So now that I have it all pinned and ready to go or clipped in my case, I'm gonna start my stitch line up here and I'm gonna baste on the whole length of this line that I drew and I'm gonna back stitch really well here at this dot and then I'm gonna lower my stitch length and continue sewing that half inch seam allowance all the way up and around to the end. Ran out of thread. Okay, so now to finish this stitch line, we are gonna serge all the way around, keeping this fly area intact. So serge all the way down and around to finish off these seams. And we are not trimming anything.
So I got it all stitched and finished. And then what I did is I pinned my sides together here all the way down. Well, I flipped them right side out and I pinned the sides and then I put them on for a dry fit and they fit well so far. The front rise is a little funky. Oh wow, look how perfect I matched up my crotch seam, yay. Um, the front rise is just a little bit large. So I, I'm too nervous to mess with it right now, but if it really bothers me at the end, I'll just go back in and make this come in a little bit more, but I don't want it to like ride up when I have the straps on it and when I have it all completed. So I'm just gonna leave it as is, but so far it's fitting well. And the next step is going to be, we need to press all of the seams toward, if the, your wrong side is up, toward the left side here, including your faux fly. So everything needs to be pressed. If you have a tailor's hand, this is a really great time to use that because this is super curved. And so it can be kind of a pain in the butt. I'm gonna attempt to do it on my press, so I will be back. All right, so I didn't press the whole thing because it was damn near impossible, but I did press this section here where the fake fly is. And so we're just gonna move on to that step. I'm gonna put a clip here at the top so that my fly stays where it's supposed to be. And then what you need to do is you take your fly top stitching guide and you lay it just like that. And then we need to mark our line. I'm going to use my chalk and just draw this line. I probably could have done a little bit better of a job cutting this thing out here. And then what we need to do is we need to go stitch down this line to stitch our faux fly into place. And we're gonna do a double stitch line here. Now I'm going to do my second stitch line right on the inside of that first one. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we need to add some top stitching here along through this whole crotch line seam so that it looks like all of the rest of the seams. And I'm gonna start a half an inch above my stitch line here on the faux fly and stitch a 16th of an inch, so right on the seam line, and then again mirroring with the second stitch line. And we're gonna go all the way down and up the back. And now I couldn't press mine because I was using the heat press. So I'm just going to carefully be shifting my seam allowance over to this side while I'm sewing. Thank you. 
The last thing that we need to do to finish up our fly area is we need to add what's called a bar tack. And so my machine doesn't do a bar tack, but if you have a regular machine, you have one, or you can use a really, really tiny zigzag stitch. But a bar tack is this stitch line here that connects the two seams that we just made. And then there's another one right here. So I'm just gonna go back and forth using my straight stitch to create those bar tacks on my pair here. So if you look, see right here, I'm gonna connect those two lines and then I'm just gonna do another one right over here to replicate the jeans. Oh, it's actually here on the inside one. Technically a bar tack would be going in the opposite direction, but you know, we're just gonna work with what we've got. <laughs> 